Hey Valley Middle. Tonight we're going to be talking about estimating products and quotients. This can be a little bit tricky as there's a number of different things you have to take into consideration when doing this. So I want to make sure that you stop the video at all times during this and follow along through with the examples. But first let's start with something fun. What is the oldest known musical instrument? And we'll be back to that shortly. But first, the official target for tonight is 5.1b. I can generate a reasonable product and quotient when fractions are involved. Here's the problem du jour. Last night while cleaning the house I collected 13 bags of those little rubber bands. All the bags were about three quarters full. How many total bags would I have if I combined them? I just want an estimate here. So I've got three quarters which is about one bag. So 13 times one really my estimate is about 13 bags because they're all almost full. That's what we're going to be working with tonight estimating products, quotients. All right, little review of vocabulary. A product then is the answer to a multiplication problem. The quotient, the answer to a division problem. And then estimate, that's come up with a reasonable solution. And we usually do this mentally. You don't need to grab a calculator to do this. A couple other things. Remember that this funny little sign means approximately. Here's just a couple of the quick examples. 15 and 7 eighths divided by 1 and 8 tenths. Well, I don't know what that is, but I can estimate that 15 and 7 eighths is about 16. It's almost 16. 1 and 8 tenths is about 2. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. My estimated <coughs> quotient is 8. Last time when we were estimating sums and differences, we were rounding to the nearest half or whole. The zero, half, or whole. Tonight, I want you to be thinking about just rounding to the nearest whole number. Well, this gets a little tricky too, so let's just kind of use as a guideline that anything from zero to one half, we're just going to call zero, and anything from one half to one will bump up or will round up. I know that that leaves half right in the middle, and you can kind of decide what to do with that yourself too, okay? All right. Let's try a couple of examples here. What is 4 and 2 thirds times 4 and 1 eighth? All right. Just like we did with sums and differences, we're going to round both numbers here because we have two mixed numbers. This time we're rounding to the whole number, so it's a little bit easier. So 4 and 2 thirds. Hmm. Well, 2 thirds is bigger than a half, so I'm just going to call this bad boy 5. 4 and 1 eighth. Hmm. Well, 1 eighth is smaller than a half, quite a bit, so we're just going to call that guy 4. So, my estimated product is just multiplying these two numbers together, these two rounded numbers, 5 times 4, which is 20. My estimated product, 20. Slam bam, thank you ma'am. It's pretty easy if you just kind of reason your way through it. All right, well this one here is a little bit weird. Now we've got 1 fifth times 7. All right. Rounding both numbers, one-fifth, that's a really small number. That's way less than a half. So that's zero. So zero times seven is zero. Can you have an estimated product that is zero? Well, I just did it. And when you think about it, one-fifth times seven, that's only going to be a little bit over one anyway. So yeah, it's, it's, it's close to zero. And zero is nothing. And the prod, actual product would be a very small number, so estimations of zero are okay today. All right. How about this one here? I'll try this one on your own. 5 eighths times 11 twelfths. Please pause it and try it. All right. Let's see how you did. Well, I said that 5 eighths is about 1, because it's bigger than a half, and 11 twelfths is way bigger than half, so that's about 1. So... 1 times 1 equals 1. Right, I'm just going to go double check up here. 5 eighths, 1 times 1. Yeah, that works. My estimated product is 1. I forgot to stress the check on those other slides, but that's important. All right, well, here's another example. What about estimating quotients? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. We've got 9 and 7 ninths divided by 2. So we've got 9 and 7 ninths. And 9 and 7 ninths is almost 10, so we're going to call that 10. So 
10 divided by 2 is 5. My estimated quotient is 5. Go up and double check. Yeah, about 10 divided by 2. 5 is good. 5 is real good. Sorry, it's a bad George Bush. All right. Have you tried this one by yourself? 15 and 7 ninths divided by 2 and 1 fifth. Go ahead and pause the video. I see dead people. Good right. Good morning. That's Ms. Crothers just arriving for work. All right. Let's take a look. 15 and 7 ninths divided by 2 and 1 fifth. Well, 15 and 7 ninths is approximately 16. It's way over a half. So 15 7 ninths rounds to 16. 2 and 1 fifth. 1 fifth is a pretty small number, so we're just going to call that 2. So 16 divided by 2 equals 8. Estimated quotient is 8. Let me go up and double check. 15, that's about 16 divided by about 2. Got it. All righty. Sometimes we need to use compatible numbers. I'll show you as we work through this example. 33 divided by 3 and 5 6. I'm going to change this guy right here. Sorry about that. So I write out my numbers. 3 and 5 6. Well, that's about 4. So I've got 33 divided by 4. Those numbers are not compatible. They don't work well together, do they? So I need you to come down here and round to a compatible number. 32 is divisible by 4, and it's very close to 33. So I just rounded down 33 to 32, and I said 32 divided by 4 is 8. My estimated quotient is 8. Let me go up and double check. 33, that's about 32 divided by about 4. And that's how you do it. Okay? All right, let's see if I've got an example for you to try. I do. Why don't you go ahead and try this one here. 25 divided by 2 and 5 sevenths. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, let's see how you did. All right, 25 divided by 2 and 5 uh, sevenths. Sorry, got to pop that little baby out of there. Let's see. 2 and 5 sevenths, well, that's about 3. 25 divided by 3, again, these numbers are not compatible. So, round to a compatible number. 25 is close to 24, and 24 is divisible by 3. So, I'll just round down. 24 divided by 3 is 8. My estimated quotient, 8. Go up and check it, make sure it makes sense. Eh, about 24 divided by about 3 works for me. Hey, that rhymes. All right, a couple other ones for you to try on your own here. What is 5 and 2 thirds divided by 14 seventeenths? Go ahead and give it a shot. All right, let's take a peek. 5 and 2 thirds divided by 14 seventeenths. Well, 5 and 2 thirds is about 6, because this is way over a half. 14 seventeenths, well, that's about 1. So, hey, 14 divided by 6, sorry, 6 divided by 1 is 6. I'm going to move this up so I can make sure you can see that. I'm going to move my division sign up, too. That should be good. All right, let me go up and double check. 6 divided by 1 is... 6. Yes, my estimated quotient is 6. All right, one last one before the ticket. What is 1 fourth times 13? Yikes. Give it a shot. I know you can do it. All right, let's see how you did. Well, 1 fourth times 13. 1 fourth, well, that's way less than a half, so we're going to call that 0. 0 times 13 is 0. My estimated product is 0. Uh, once you get uh, to be in 7th and 8th grade, going into high school, we'll practice multiplying that out um, and getting a closer estimate. But for this point, when we do not, don't know how to multiply fractions, we're just going to go with rounding down. All right, here's your ticket to the show. Go ahead and pause for a moment. All right, the answer to the trivia question. What is the oldest known musical instrument? De flute. German scientists unearthed the old snow musical instrument fashioned by human hands, a flute about 35,000 years old. Wow. Just after modern humans entered Europe. All right. That's a little piece of tribute for you band kids. Have a good night. Thanks for listening.